Robert, weren't you on Grandma's Virginity, Justin Roiland's uh, podcast at yes. one point? Yes, I believe a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that like? Slightly more professional than this. Really? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> was the me, room that's... as big, though? This is a bigger room, it's right? It's a bigger room, Much right? bigger room, yeah. <laughs> good, <laughs> good. Right? Much bigger room. But did they promote your new comic book? No, definitely mm. not. Oblivion right. Song? Oblivion Song by Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo De Felici. Oh, my He's God. He's Italian. Racist. <laughs> Well, it's not, I don't think it's racist to say that based on well, his name. Well, when you it say like it if, like that. If you don't read his book, you, you may wake up dead. I was just in Italy. They do all talk like Mario. They do? Whoa. No, I'm just kidding. Let's go. <laughs> is that is that bad? Is that no, no. I, I, no. I, I was been imp- on the internet today. Can no, that was a wall of impression. Like, I was impressed. Like it, that's it, it is it is exciting when you go to a foreign country and they actually like, you meet somebody and they actually do like the thing that you would think would be stereotypical. Like I was in a car. I probably said this before a long time ago in Harmontown, but I got into a car when I got to like Naples and was driving, and, he, and we were talking. And he's like, "How many people live in uh, in Los Angeles?" I don't know, like twenty five million. He goes, "Mamma mia!" <laughs> And I, 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 he was in the front and I was in the back. And I'm looking at him like, is he, is he fucking doing this? Am I on camera? Just do that for tourists. But he, gave, he actually gave me a full on Mamma Mia. And then I was in Paris and I got a, I got a, like a few for real. Ooh la la. They really fucking say it. They say, they say ooh la la. In Italy? In Paris. <laughs> in Paris. Yes. That's in, where in, they it, say it. Yeah, in Italy they say Mamma Mia. And that's, they say Mamma Mia in. Italy. Italy. Yes. And then they say... In France, they say, ooh la la. So Oblivion Ooh-la-la. Song is Ooh-la-la. a science fiction comic book. Ooh-la. It's yeah. uh, got all kinds of great stuff in it. It's super cool. I don't so know. why Robert is the Oblivion... March 7th. I don't What's see What's so these... hypnotic about the Oblivion Song? <laughs> and in China, they go, oh, hell no. I don't see any zombies in here. No, no. zombies. No. No, I decided that they don't come in until later. Hmm. <laughs> All but, right. Uh, well, let's yeah. give it a chance. Okay. Try to change it up a little bit. I mean, I'm in a what, rut, but I'm not what's in that the, much uh, of a what's rut. What's the log line on <laughs> Oblivion Song? Can you can you reveal that? Oh, the log line is terrible. Uh, no, I, 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 it's, just, <laughs> well, you, I, I, it's you, a complicated you, idea, but it, it's basically there's like 300,000 people in Philadelphia that get uh, uh, sent to another dimension. Basically, uh, a large landmass in Philadelphia transposes with a large landmass in another dimension. And then uh, uh, our main character, uh, Nathan Cole, is a scientist who is tasked with uh, trying to rescue those people. But when our story takes place, it's been 10 years. They've stopped finding people. They've lost funding. And he is still going over there and uh, doing it because his brother is lost in that dimension. But so he's going th- to get his are brother. Are there people from the other dimension now populating that part of Philadelphia? There's no people in the other dimension. It's a very primitive uh, uh, alien world with like monsters and all so kinds of crazy stuff. So now Philly's got some monsters rolling around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they're going or down. Or it did 10 years ago and they've all been cleaned out and there's like a museum and stuff. They're so. walking down to the strip and getting some fucking Pramani brothers and fucking. Oh, that's Pittsburgh, sorry. It's like a land of decay. And if your mouth is a land of decay, you should brush it. And the way that you can ensure your brush won't go soft uh, as you use it, at which point it becomes so ineffective that most dentists say you may as well stop, hit yourself in the face with a hammer than keep brushing with your expired shitty Target toothbrush. Go to the good people at Quip. Uh, they mail you a new toothbrush head every fucking statistical period the, when you need it. I don't know, it's, it's a millennial toothbrush club. It's time to put gingivitis on blast. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Quip is the uh, toothbrush of choice at uh, Oblivion Song headquarters. Oh, really? Yeah. Keep your mouth out of the you, you and Fer- Ferdinando de Felici. <laughs> <laughs> <God. laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> it's not okay to call him Ferdinand. His name is Lorenzo. I saw somebody. Is Ferdinand there's a, Italian? Uh, there's no way that uh, Annalisa Leone, your colorist, is related to Leo Leone, the famous children's book author who left us a few I don't years believe ago. so. Yeah. It's probably a common name. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... Leone's like growing on trees over in Italy. Yeah, probably. So, how many issues do you have? And what, 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 uh, I mean, how many do you, how many, what character are people going to be cosplaying at at the next Comic Con? Oh boy. Uh, there's a cool character named Keith that comes in in issue three that looks awesome. Are you going to be uh, right back on the monthly schedule where you're just like, I got to write an Oblivion well, song this month? Yeah, I mean, we've actually been working on that book in secret for almost two years so that. You know, I can keep on the monthly schedule without wanting to kill myself. That's awesome. So uh, we've we, we're working on, working on issue twelve right now, but issue one comes out in uh, on March seventh, and so we're basically a year ahead of schedule. Is your eleven year old smart? Yes. Would you tell me if he was stupid? Yeah. 
he's not listening to this. Yeah, I would just ask you to edit it out later. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Is he is he like is he a nerd? He is. Uh, yeah, I mean, he plays the video games. He doesn't do the sports. And how old's the daughter? Uh, she's eight. Will be nine. So they're both like asking a lot of questions about uh, birds and clouds and stuff. <laughs> Not really. They're answering my questions about birds and clouds and stuff. Oh, uh, but uh, no. I mean, they're you know they're very creative. Uh, my my. What don't daughter, you know about birds and clouds? No, I'm just I'm just saying they. Where they, you find them? I don't know. They're know it alls. They're like yeah, uh, they're not yeah. coming to you. How, how aware are they of your like celebrity status? Are you like like what like the the role you play in? That part is frustrating. I mean, they're very aware. I mean, much more aware now that they're in school because the other kids in school, like, hear things from their parents or older siblings or whatever. And so, like, my son comes home from school and is like, oh, I hear, uh, I hear you're pretty uh, pretty popular. And I'm like, oh, what, what are you talking about? Eddie Van Halen's kid says, <laughs> yeah. my dad's some kind of mucky muck. <laughs> exactly. Well, there was one cool, there was one day where he came home and he was like, dad, the, the middle school kids found out who my dad was. And they were talking to me. It was totally awesome. <laughs> like all these like 13, 14, 15 year olds were talking to him. And so he was like the king of the school for a day. Uh, so that was nice. But, uh, but yeah, they, uh, uh, the, the frustrating part is like I was on the Conan O'Brien show. And so uh, I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm totally on this talk show. You guys should watch the segment. And, uh, and I put him on the couch, you know, because if I was a kid and my dad had come home and been like, I'm on television, I would have right. jumped up and been like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, holy crap. You know, I would have lost my mind. And my kids are like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I turn it on and they're like, okay, can we go? Do we have to watch this whole thing? And I was like, oh, what the hell? Like, they don't. They don't care. Well, they're probably, either they don't care because you're enough without that. It's just, it's normal to them. Right. You know, like, they're like, right. oh, yeah, Yeah, they've you're seen on, you on yeah. G4 like, for 30 years. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, Robert, they're, they're we, like, we, we can, here at Hermantown, give you a beat, and you can put your kids on blast right now if you want. <laughs> that you would go horribly. <laughs> Just, I want to. I want to make that offer rhyme. to anyone out there listening. We will put your kids on blast if you come on the show. Um, you can tell us whatever you want about them. We'll put them on blast for you, so you don't have to be guilty of it. Um, Cook your own meals. Yeah. Yeah. Robert, would you be comfortable with Dan putting your your kids on blast? Sure. Please, it Zach, would be an honor. Zach, give us that beat. Kirkman, Kirkman kids go on blast. All right. What, what are go their Dan, names? Go. What are their names? I'm not telling you my okay. name. All right. Well, I'll, ma I'll, I'll make them Jeez. up. I'll make them up. <laughs> All right. Where this, this one goes out to Xander and uh, and Heather Kirkman. Xander <laughs> and Heather. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh God. Okay. That was... Yo, yo, Xander Kirkman, you think you're all that because you don't want to sit through a Conan segment? What's up with that? Fucking be appreciative. When when I was your dad's age, I had to walk up hill both ways to get a fucking guest spot on a talk show. Fucking Xander, Xander Kirkman. What kind of name is that? Fucking, oh, well, I guess that's your, your dad like picks the name, so I'm kind of putting him on blast. Okay, well, all right, all right. Well, you have a dumb name, Xander. Uh, and also, you're ugly on the inside, and uh, your uh, your interests in school are mis uh, mis 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 misapplied. Like you think soccer's cool because you're uh, you're you're not seeing the big picture. You're gonna regret it. And uh, 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 wh wh how come you haven't told your dad uh, about your interest in musicals? Let's move on to Heather. Uh, nice hair. <laughs> Maybe a couple too many ribbons. You think people are gonna think you're protesting too much? Uh, if your if your hair is enough, why so many ribbons? It's not a gift. Uh, and and that and that uh, that that uh, that 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 uh, uh, Austin Powers impression you keep doing. People are just pretending it's funny because you're eight, Heather Kirkman. Yeah, update your routine, Heather. Uh, but it really wouldn't be putting two kids on blast if I didn't follow it up with, I think, to go to their Instagram and shit on them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's Xander Kirk underscore 69. Real nice. I don't approve of that one. And Heather, uh, Heather, Heather Doodles, uh, uh, underscore sixty nine. Brooks best friend, underscore tendon befriend, uh, underscore. I mean, I feel bad for these kids. They have to keep. They can't. Not all the names are taken now. 
But anyways, go put her on blast. A couple of assholes, those kids. Yeah, I mean, you're on well, blast. They, they they're gonna have to straighten up their act now after hearing this. Like, That'll be good for them. I think. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna make them listen to this every morning when they get up. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna wake them up with this. <laughs> and I'm going to change their names to Xander and Heather. <laughs> <laughs> They're better than the ones they have. <laughs> they didn't like the Conan segment. They're going to love this. Yeah. It's gonna uh, be great. Yeah, thing, I guess if, I... If the middle school kids thought they were famous because you're you... When they find out that they're on blast from Dan Harmon, it's going to oh. really oh my God. take it over the edge. Yeah. I guess I regret not having kids. Uh, <laughs> you know? No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, because... He, he still can. <laughs> he, 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 you wish you had a couple eight-year-olds running around the house to put on blast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I noticed, like, like kids, like, they kind of, like, they, they do, like, like, when they're really young, they kind of laugh at sillier characters that my friends don't laugh at anymore. You know, like... I like can, what? Like, I can just go, like, oh, Mr. I'm Mr. Arm Waver, and then, like, a three-year-old will be like, that's amazing, and... That kinda, wears off at five, uh, let me just yeah. tell you. I know, but then you... I, I imagine you come up with new shit, right? No. No. All right. Well, then I don't want kids. But uh, You want a dumber audience? You can find a dumber audience. I cannot. Trust me. You just got to have dumber material. Uh, I, uh, have you tried puppets? I have a niece I've never <laughs> Raise, met. Raises puppets. She's like, <laughs> I don't know how old my niece is right now. Anybody go to my brother's Facebook? Uh, is, it, is that Bones' niece? Yeah. Bones Wouldn't it be weird niece? if I knew? <laughs> I would yeah, Bones' love it. niece. It would be hilarious. <laughs> Your niece is seven. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think she's like full. She's like a full. I'm drone. such a fan, Dan. Like, uh, I'm so, I follow your brother's Instagram. She loves dinosaurs. She plays violin. That's what I know about my niece. Well, that's at least thirteen. She's been playing it for a while. It's, just, it's not like a, a phase, and it's like she's overpraised. She she's like good a, at the violin. Yeah, she started on like a real small violin. I, I assume so. I, like I this. How, I've never had kids, so I don't know how it works. <laughs> what, what's that? Did she start with the smallest violin in the world? Believe me, if I ever have a family, they're all going to need to be virtuosos in the world's smallest violin. <laughs> I will come home <laughs> with complaints. Um, Donna Schraub would do that a lot. My mother. She'd go like this. She'd go, mm, you know what this is? I can't, I can't imagine people doing that in real life. Oh, God. Yeah. That was, that was, uh, that's. Yeah, I, I think it only works come. once too. That's you know, what I mean. Well, not, not in the, the drop house. You do that to someone, it's kind of like oh God, you know I what this it. is. Is this one the violin yeah. in the world? Yes. Here's something I, I don't understand. It's a fucking violin. Move on. Yeah. It's, it's already sarcasm, it but then it undercuts itself by being genuine sarcasm. I'm playing the world's smallest violin for you. It's like when people say I could care less. I'm like, well, thank you for caring more than you do. Yeah, it should be the I, I'm playing the world's biggest violin. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you always say, it like it's sarcasm, but it's a small violin. You've shrunk it down. Like your sarcasm is. I totally can't even undercut. see it. I think yeah. it comes more down to not, not the people not understanding the like irony, is that most parents are really bad at space work. So like if you so I like, right, that's what I was gonna <laughs> say. You couldn't. <laughs> like, that, that requires more calories. Yeah, you more couldn't work. do it's a bigger too close one. to a hug. <laughs> It would open you up to a hug from your fucking abused yeah. child to play the world's largest mime violin. It would be too close to hugging them. You pieces of sh- baby you, boomer shit. Robert, Robert, you ruined our country. I never hugged my kids. Do you, ever, do you ever find yourself using some of those like parents' greatest hits on your children? Like smallest violin or I used to walk uphill both ways. You know, Everything you touch turns to shit. Yeah. Um, uh, why don't you write us a story about a little boy that gets caught playing with matches and lives to regret it? Yeah. When's the fourth season coming out? Uh, your, <laughs> my, your sister doesn't exist. My dad gave exist. me bloody lips all the time. Why are you complaining? <laughs> that kind of thing. One of those. I'll, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 room is a mess. Um, I'm about to. I'm going to tear it apart using a vacuum cleaner as a blunt instrument because I'm shit faced. I'm going. Oh, to, I'm going to, I'm going to use a vacuum cleaner like a fucking Dothraki broadsword <laughs> to symbolically make your room messier than it ever could have been. Uh, All right, uh, Jeff. Uh, here's your leg warmers. I'm taking you off of the baseball field <laughs> because it's jazz dance class time, and I said that in front of all of your baseball team. Do you ever, do you ever use that one on your kids? That's mm-hmm. a good one. I have used that one, but it was basketball, not baseball. Okay, so, well, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's parallel. 
Stop asking me questions about looking for Mr. Goodbar. I can't, I don't know where to store these books if it's not in your bedroom. Wait, I don't, that one, I don't, I don't get that one either. It's very specific. What's the, what's, the, what's the Mr. Goodbar one? I thought these were parental classics that we were doing. That's the one with peanuts, right? Yeah. Are they peanuts? They're too small to be peanuts. They're like little they're mini peanut peanuts. fragments. Mr. Like, Goodbar is, is, yeah, it's milk chocolate with like very sickly, like peanuts yeah. that were rejected a- from a- this, their holding companies. Yeah. Like, they, they didn't make the payday cut. Yeah, like, yeah this, is, this is the fucking the, the shit that fell through the payday sieve. It's peanut laundering. That's yeah. what Mr. Goodbar they just is. You sweep the floor at the yeah, payday you know, factory. Hey, yeah, and guess what? No, you're ship Mr. it to the Mr. Goodbar. You're in a Mr. Goodbar, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for being the worst peanut ever, you we'll, fucking. We'll call it Mr. Goodbar, and no one will know how bad the candy bar <laughs> that, is. That's what tater tots are. Tater tots. They, they were they were making French fries, and there was all these little like shaved ends, and there was just all the, there was all this potato debris. They kept just throwing away or sending is that the, true sending like pig farms and like I. I cattle feed and, and some genius goes hey let's fucking throw some oil on that shit and put them in a little weird barrel shaped cylinders and they're fucking so they're it's like the, little potato hot dogs it, it, it's it's the it's potato debris and and it's great it's what it's that's why they're, they're like the underdog of, of the of the potato world they're pretty good the only <laughs> the only peanuts that are worse than mr goodbar peanuts are the ones that become crushed nuts of uh, like that they use as condiments can you imagine what those fuckers uh, did wrong 